offered for the people of the parish. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks to your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God, Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us. Make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is the reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from a virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has just committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sin is the way. He guides humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, 
changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord tells a parable, story with many points. But as you listen to this parable, the point seems so obvious. You want to say, Lord, why did you even bother telling us this parable? How could you not get that God is pleased with the one who eventually does what he needs them to do? Why even go there? The point is so close to the surface. Actually, the parables, remember, they have a surface meaning. But the more you think about them, the deeper you go between the words, the meanings get deeper as well. The parable is spoken in a context last week and this week. The theme of the readings from the Bible, from the Old Testament before Christ, the New Testament, the theme is the same. Remember how last week's readings began. Who can know the mind of God. Who can figure his ways? This week, it begins with an Old Testament reading. God says, you say I'm not fair. My ways are fair. Your ways are not fair. We're trying to figure out as best as we can the mind of God, how he operates how he thinks, how he deals with us. In trying to do that, we always have the understanding, I'm never going to fully understand God and what he does or how he does it. I, I can't fully. It takes me a lifetime to figure out me and why I think the way I do and why I feel the way I do. You're married 40, 50, 60 years. You are still figuring out the person you're married to and their reactions and their feelings and their tastes. You're still learning. So we barely are able to figure out ourselves, but yet we're in a relationship with God. He is part of our lives. And like anyone who's in our lives, we kind of want to know what, what, what's behind the way he does things. What's his thought pattern? in facing different situations. So he tells us, who can understand the mind of God? Well, we have this gospel that our Lord spoke, and the idea is to help us a little better understand how God acts, what he does, and how he does it. And the gospel calls to mind a way that God acts. You can see it in the whole Bible. You see it in every book of the Old Testament. You see it in the New Testament after Christ came. And what it tells us, God does not act in the world directly. God acts in the world indirectly. He acts through other people. He doesn't do many things directly himself. God doesn't come in person very often and speak to people. 
A hand does not reach down from heaven and move things around. God works through other people. He needs their hands in order to work in the world. In the Old Testament, there are like 14 or 15 prophetic books. God, when he had to speak to Israel, he always chose a prophet. In different times, in different places, he would choose a prophet and he would ask the prophet, will you give the people this message for me? And then he would give the prophet signs. The prophet, like Moses or Elisha, would be able to perform miracles in order to prove that the word that he was speaking wasn't his own thought, it came from God. Look, God gave me the ability to do this miracle to show you that it's him who said this. But he would choose to talk to the people. Moses, he chose to talk to the people. He didn't give everyone the Ten Commandments. He gave them to Moses and then said, now you go give these to the people and explain to them what each one is about. So we're figuring the mind of God. And we, we've got a, a major element in God's mind. He works through people. In the New Testament, the Gospel begins in the New Testament with the Archangel Gabriel being sent by God to Mary in Nazareth. God had been preparing the Jewish people for the coming of his son. For tens of thousands of years, by the hand he took them and he led them to understand about who he is and that his son was coming. When the time came that God wanted to send Christ into the world, he needed the cooperation of Mary. He needed Mary to allow it to happen. So the Archangel Gabriel goes to the Blessed Mother as a messenger from God and says, God would enter the world through you. Will you let this happen, Mary? But understand, if you say yes to God, it's going to mean there's more of him and less of you. It means you're going to now be part of a plan that God has. And you probably have your own plans and your own thoughts and your own wishes, but it's going to be less of them. Now it's going to be God's need that counts. Will you allow him to come into the world through you? And you got to think, all of creation at that moment kind of was on pause, waiting for Mary's answer. She could have said no. And if she said no, I guess you and I would be pagans. Our sins would never be forgiven. The gates of heaven would still be closed. But for, for the reasons of her holiness, Mary said yes. And then it was possible for God to come into the world because Mary said yes to God. So what is this gospel about? It's about God asking people to allow him to work through them. I need you to do this. Will you do it for me? Will you allow me to work through you? And it's not going to be in stupendous ways like it was with the Blessed Mother. God comes to each of us and he asks us if we would allow him to be at work in the world through us. It happens like this. It comes first of all, I know it's God asking me when it's right in front of my face and I can't avoid it. It's there. It's the 
two-ton elephant in the middle of the room, taking up all this space, and I can't get around it. There it is. This thing has come in front of me. Um, maybe it's sickness. Someone else's or my own. Maybe it's the need of someone I know. Not closely, a neighbor, but there's a need, and it's now in front of my face. Maybe there's a fight going on in the family, and people are choosing sides. Maybe there's someone at work who's been singled out and is being beaten into the ground by everyone else because they don't like them. Maybe someone I know has been accused of doing something. I don't know if it's true or not. How can you believe people? I don't know. Did they do it? Didn't they do it? Is it my position to judge them? Is it my position to punish them? But I'm afraid. If everyone else is doing this and joining in beating them down, the mob is savage. If I go against the mob, they'll turn against me next, and I'm afraid. I don't want that to happen. Challenges, choices, right and wrong, they're there in front of us. How do we want to deal with them? Usually, we'd like to avoid them. If I can get around the elephant, I will. Or, there's another way. I'll try and put it on someone else's plate and get them to do it. People are great. Father, so-and-so is troubled. You should call them. Hmm. How did you find out they were troubled? Well, they told me. Good. And you're being a good listener, aren't you? And you're helping that person. Maybe you've taken them out to lunch. Maybe you've taken them for a walk on the boardwalk. Maybe you've tried to do something to lift them up beyond handing them to me. If they want me, they'll call me and then I'll respond. You have to take care of this because God put it in front of you. This is how we know. God is asking us, will you let me be there? Everyone is angry at someone at work. Maybe justifiably, maybe not. I'm not gonna be angry at that person. I'm not gonna make their life any more difficult than it is right now. As a matter of fact, God is probably waiting for me to say something kind to that person in order to help them through a difficult moment. My neighbor is in need at this moment of their lives. God isn't asking me to take this person, throw them over my shoulder, and carry them for the rest of my life. He's just asking me to do something for an hour that will help them and make their burden lighter. God is asking me, will you allow me to work through you? Someone needs a little hope. Someone needs kindness. Someone needs a word of encouragement. Everyone does from now and then. Will you do that for me? You have a mouth. You have hands in this world. I'm in heaven. Will you do this for me? If I say yes, then God is there. In a very dark, difficult situation, at a moment in a person's life where I have no idea how beaten down they may be, if I say yes and I do it, God, the virtues of God are there. And there's brightness there. If I say no, it's dark. And it's totally dark. And there's no light. And there's no kindness. And there's no goodness. 
and there's no God. In our world, people have caught on. If I say yes to God, well, there's less for me. And I don't want there to be less for me. I want there to be more for me. So people very easily say no to the good act, to the kind act, to the supportive act, and they go about their own lives. However, when we say yes to God, and that little candle of hope, of goodness, of God is lit in a small corner of the world, that candle has a way of lighting up everyone around them. When someone does something selfish, how do we respond? We're brought down. I'll leave you with an example. There's a new thing. I, uh, maybe it's existed, but I've only noticed it in the past few years. It's how people drive. It reflects their thoughts. The new thing that I've noticed is this. You're in one of these pull-in stalls in the parking lot. So it's time to leave and you're pulling out and your head is swiveling all around you. Don't totally trust the little th screen in front of me. I'm looking to the sides as well. You get halfway out and somebody zips behind you. They saw you're halfway in the road. All right, pulling out, but they couldn't wait three seconds for you to complete the maneuver. And they're gonna risk you signing right into them because you can't see them at that point. What I've done is I've kind of not seen it as a surprise anymore. I look for it. I say, no, expect it. They're going, this is what they do now. So just expect it. Don't be surprised. Someone will come speeding along, see you pulling out, and try to get zipped right past you in order not to be held up. How do you feel when that happens? Well, girl, what's wrong with people? And uh, what's the world? It kind of, there's darkness. And they brought about darkness because actually they said no. It's about me. It's about my four seconds, not the fact that you're halfway out in the road and where can you go. It's about me. There was darkness, they increased the darkness, and the darkness touched you as well. But every once in a while, there's someone who all of a sudden stops. And they give you that gesture that is in all the driving manuals. Go ahead. Finish. Get out. And you wait and you think to yourself, that was good. That was really very kind and thoughtful and it wasn't selfish at all. Thank you, God, that there were still people like that. And you know what? That's affected you as well. Now, I have a trip to complete. I'm going to think of how I felt about the person who was kind. In a very, very, very small way, they allowed God and the virtues of God. Kindness, selflessness, consideration, everything that makes God happy when he sees his children doing it. They allowed it to be present, and the feeling is, oh, I got to do that too. I have to pass that on. So I'll go back to our gospel. What's the point of the parable? One said yes, one said no. The point is, God is asking me all the time. He's putting things in front of me. How I act or react will either bring him there and make it a little better for someone. Or how I act or react will increase the darkness that is there 
already. God, how do you do things? How do you think? How do you act in the world? Answer through you. I need you. I need your hands. I need your mouth. If you say yes to me, I'm there. If you say no, I'm not. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in the Lord God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, Lord of the Father, the Lord of all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever, for ages unto endless ages. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For those who turn from the love of Christ and for those who neglect the worship of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this community and for every town and land, and for those who with faith live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the protection and well-being of our service men and women throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Sikhs family and friends, especially Bruce W. Kloss, and for the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring Saint Gennaro, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives to Christ our God. To thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. This Friday, October 6th, is first Friday, there will be no 8 a.m. morning mass. The parish mass will be celebrated in the evening at 7 p.m., followed by the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Mass intentions for 2024 are now available in the parish center beginning Monday, October 2nd. Religious education classes begin Monday, October 2nd. Please see the bulletin for the class schedules.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of his name. For our good and all his holy church. Again, let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, find acceptance with you, that through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, freed us from an ending death. By rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, John, our bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, the saints who pleased you, Throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, O oh, body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymns number 614. Thank you.